Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and yet another interesting, uh, uh, more not something we don't already know. We already know that Russia has moved nuclear warheads into Kaliningrad, but today uh, NATO, uh, Jens Stoltenberg, uh, the head, the director of the NATO forces, uh, the all around the world there, actually speaking about that, and uh, of course also claiming that Russia's uh, aggression uh, down in Syria, backing as he calls it the Assad regime. I think if there's any regime, it is probably the NATO regime or the uh, Obama regime, more along those lines there. But anyway, let me let you, I want you to hear this right from the horse's mouth, so to speak, here, so you can actually hear NATO confirming that there are nuclear warheads that have been moved to Kaliningrad. Take a listen to this here. Just came out here just a few hours ago uh, where uh, uh, Jens Stoltenberg, uh, the head of the NATO, brings this out. Uh, we will discuss uh, Russia's uh, recent uh, military activity along our borders. Close to our borders, Russia continues its assertive military posturing, including with massive non-notice uh, exercises. This month alone, uh, Russia has deployed nuclear-capable Iskander missiles to Kaliningrad uh, and suspended a weapons-grade plutonium agreement uh, with the United States. And Russia continues uh, to destabilize eastern Ukraine with military and financial support for the separatists. These moves do not lower tensions or restore predictability to our relations. On NATO's southern neighborhood, um, uh, Russia's uh, continued support uh, for the Assad regime in Syria uh, is also uh, deeply uh, troubling. Russia has resumed the bombing of Aleppo, which is exacerbating uh, a humanitarian catastrophe. Men, women and children are dying every day, killed by disgraceful attacks on their homes uh, and even their hospitals. Again, uh, of course, he's going to call on Russia to stop the aggression, etc. But you know what's interesting? That's like the old saying goes in Alabama, where I grew up at, where they say the you know pot can't call kettle black. Um, has anybody noticed that, according to what we have here on the RT report here, U.S.-led coalition kill 300 Syrian civilians in 11 probed strikes? Uh, that's according to Amne Amnesty International. Uh, they're saying here that the 11 airstrikes conducted by the U.S.-led coalition in Syria, which Amnesty International investigated for, at least, for, the, for its latest report, says the U.S. came uh, come clean about the civilian toll of its fight against Islamic State. The Amnesty suspects that the U.S. Central Command, uh, CETCOM, which directs coalition airstrikes in Syria, may have carried out unlawful attacks in Syria, failing to take necessary measures to prevent civilian killings. We fear the U.S.-led coalition is significantly under, underestimating the harm caused by the civilians in the operations in Syria, said Lynn Maloff, Deputy Director for Research and Amnesty International on Beirut's regional office there. And that's not even counting all the civilian deaths that have been killed, uh, whether, whether it be from the Saudis, their, their, their partners down in Yemen, um, you know, What's going on in Libya, all the death tolls there, the funerals, everything that have been killed, uh, the people have been killed. It is, it is a war zone. And of course, they're not even taking into account that not just the U.S. Uh, coalition's airstrike, which by the way, I did see the amnesty report. Uh, they're saying anywhere from 300 to 1,000 civilians have been killed by those 11 airstrikes, as much as 1,000 people could have been killed. Uh, so they're, they're throwing uh, Russia and Syria under the bus, so to speak, a uh, little, you know, I don't know how you translate that into another language, but anyway. Uh, but, you know, all the while, while they, are, while they are accusing Russia and Syria, and I don't doubt that the, the strikes are causing civilian deaths, but we know that the U.S. backed uh, rebels and uh, al-Nusra, uh, al-Qaeda, ISIS, all the groups that they have backed in this region here intentionally target the civilian deaths in the region there. 
so, you know, it's one thing to intentionally target these people. It's their proxy war that they're doing with Russia. And from what we can see with Jens Stoltenberg there, they're getting ready to go to war with Russia is what it seems to be. And then the provocative uh, words that he states here about, you know, well, Russia is... Uh, you know, did this unthinkable, put nuclear weapons in Kaliningrad uh, and all the, uh, the, 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 the war games that are unannounced. Well, NATO has placed tremendous amount, number of troops and tanks and weapons and everything else all on Russia's border, totally in violation of the agreement that NATO had made with Russia at the collapse of the Soviet Union. And this was done prior to Russia doing its own buildup. And no, Russia never invaded Ukraine. It was a CIA coup, just like you have the CIA operative, Pedro Poroshenko, is in charge inside of uh, Ukraine now. It's very interesting how all the lies that are told to the media. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We'll be coming next with the Mark of the Beast. A little inside, just a little bit look of how you can't buy or sell. Look at it on a little larger picture and what they're going to do individually in the coming, no doubt, months, weeks, years. Who knows how long it is out before it affects every one of us. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.